Welcome to P3, I'm Randall Mark. This is the show that explores the fascinating people, places, and perspectives that make up our world. On today's show, climate change. Is it real? Is it fake? Is there a conspiracy to cover up the scientific facts? We find out today with an exclusive one-on-one interview with author James Hogan. I mean, you have this, you have this theory you call the Philip Morris theory. Explain it, because I think it's really interesting. It's a nice way to capture it, because that idea is in the psyche of most people. Well, the idea is that you take something that wouldn't be believable if an industry spokesperson said it, and you give it to a scientist. It's almost like the sock puppet Right, someone model of over communications here. Yeah. where you you sort of have the industry is really the source of the message, but it's a scientist who's actually delivering the message, but not a scientist who's talking about science, uh, a scientist who basically is trying to deliver the spin of the industry, mm -hmm. and you know you might think of it as kind of ventriloquism. I mean, is that is there? I think what you're getting at is this massive amount of trust that the public puts in science. And we like 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 that. It's like that. Science has no bias, and the moment you use a scientist, no one questions it. Are you are you suggesting that? Uh, I think that's true. I think that scientists at most polls will show you that academics and scientists are among the most trusted spokespeople right. that we have on any right. issue. So you sort of look at at the like if you look at an industry spokesperson, mm -hmm. all of us will look at that and say, well, you know, they have an ulterior motive. Right. And so they we want take, to sell their product or that's whatever. That's right. Yeah. And they want to protect their industry. And yeah. so you take what they say with a grain of salt. But if you're a scientist mm -hmm. and you're representing a think tank or some kind of association, you look more objective. Hey, and you're so disinterested. You, I don't want to advance anyone's cause. I'm just telling you the facts. That's right. So you look like you're kind of a defender of the public interest. Right. And you're a much more legitimate participant. But if you look into the funding behind a lot of these think tanks, what you find is they're heavily funded by, by industries. And when they're out there with these big reports, often those reports are paid for by the industry that they're defending. And so this is, what, this is the research that you get into. Yes. I mean, you're naming names. You're, you're beginning to list, here's some of the oil and gas companies that are funding this, quote, scientific research that's, that's trying to cover up this climate, uh, the global warming that's going on. Greenpeace did some research in the States and over a 10 year period found that Exxon had funded a, somewhere in the neighborhood of $24 million to these think tanks in the US. Wow. And these are basically climate, th these are think tanks that are questioning the science behind climate change. Right. And they're not scientists who are actually doing climate science. They're not scientists in many cases that even actually are qualified to do climate science and they're funded by industry. Are these professors at universities? Oh yeah, some of them are like, you know, pretty serious people. I mean, isn't their credentials up for grabs then in the sense of they're supposed to be disinterested researchers and here they're being paid off? You would think that there would be a bigger problem with this than there is. But, wow. you know, this kind of a, it's not just an issue with climate change. Mm -hmm. It's an issue with healthcare the debate that's going on in yeah. the United States right now. It's an issue during elections. These types mm -hmm. of things go on. You know, they're paid for experts right. who are biased and bring a heavy bias because of who's paying them to the public conversation. Mm -hmm. And you see it with the chemical industry. You've seen it historically with tobacco. A lot of the people who are active on the, um, the climate change file right. and who are, who are attacking climate scientists used to work in tobacco. So you're like, I can Doing trace the same this thing. right back Absolutely. when they're trying to prove that uh, smoking a cigarette is not harmful. That's right. And that secondhand smoke, that there's, right. no, that there's no evidence that, wow. that tobacco causes cancer or that there's no evidence that, that secondhand smoke is, uh, is bad for your health. So you're saying then that 10, 15 years from now when the smoke clears, you know, hopefully it does in one sense metaphorically, that we're going to look back like we have done to the tobacco debate and say, my goodness, that was not a debate at all. That was an absolute cover-up in the same way that this global warming issue is. No question.